Hey, lovely sexy hobby people. Welcome to today's video, which is issue 56 of Stormbringer for Warhammer Age of Sigma. Um, we've got some more Caradron Overlords. These, these ones are Thundrix Profiteers. So we get five minis with that. Brilliant. So are they another war cry band? Right. The Caradron Code. Is that kind of like the Pirates Code from Pirates of the Caribbean? More of a guide. The Caradron Code is the unifying document that governs the actions of the Caradron Overlords. It was drawn up during the Age of Chaos to allow the different sky ports to form a confederation and work together. There you go. Right, Arcanaut Admirals, Code Rights, Endrin Masters, Etheric Navigators, Ether Chemists, and Grunstock Companies. So, the Caradron Code provides the frameworks which within which all of the Caradron Society is organised. The Admiral's Charter is the part of the code that lays down the roles and responsibilities within each air fleet and decrees how the fleets are to be structured. Slundrix Profiteers, so we've got reasons for battle D6 rolling chart, but it says here, a chemical wedding. Uh, Bjorgen Thundrick is a skilled aether chemist. He wields an ethermatic atomizer that can spew out deadly clouds of poisonous gas. He can also use it to suck the oxygen from the air around his enemies. That's handy. Suffocating them before they can attack. Ether chemistry is a delicate marriage of complicated alchemy, investigative inquiry and chemical warfare. Chosen Tactics, D D6 rolling chart. Right, and then we come into how to build. So one of our guys has um, a ether balloon, similar to our, um, oh, what were they called, gun runners, that we built previously. Yeah, so we've got some different ones. This guy here has got what looks like some sort of mini gun. So that's cool. That's like really cool. And God knows what this is. Bjorgen Thundrick is an ether chemist and the leader of Thundrick's profiteers. Oh, that'll be his um, alchemical thing. What do they call it? A mm -hmm. Athematic Atomizer. All right. So, Kazgan Draxkewer is the group's Sky Warden. So, he's your air cover. Garrod Allenson wields a privateer pistol and an Arcanaut cutter. Dead Eye Lund is, an, uh, is armed with an ether shot rifle and Enric Ironhale carries an athematic volley gun. So there you go, right, look at these guys getting painted up. I am likely to follow more or less the paint schemes for these guys. Right, here we go, right. So Bjorgen Thundrick has a four inch move, he has five wounds, four up save and seven bravery. He has missile weapons, so, and that's his atmospheric at atomizer. He's a nine inch range, three D6 attacks, it's four plus to wound, sorry, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, minus two rend and one damage. His melee weapons are heavy instruments, which is sort of like maybe clouting somebody with a very heavy, um, Oh crap, I've forgotten the name of it now. Uh, 
microscope, there you go. It's like microscope over the head. Bang. One inch range, two attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, no rend, one damage. Toxic gases. With enemies closing in on all sides, Morgan spews forth billowing clouds of lethal chemicals. Once per battle, at the start of the combat phase, you can say this unit will release toxic gases. If you do so, for each enemy unit within six inches of this unit, roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit that are within six inches of this unit. Of this unit. For each five plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. That's a handy stratagem. I mean, there's the potential to sort of like lob them in and do that. You know, in between enemy units and see what happens. Right, Thundrix Profiteers. The, they have a four inch move, two wounds, seven bravery and four up save. Missile weapons. The Aethermatic Volley Gun has a 15 inch range, 2d6 attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, no rend, one damage. The Aether Shot Rifle, rifle, 18 inches, two attacks, three plus to hit, four plus to wound, minus one rend, one attack. Privateer Pistol, nine inches, two attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, no rend, one damage. Vulcanizer Pistol, 12 inches, three attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus one rend and one damage. And the Arcanaut Cutter has a one inch range, two attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, one damage. Gun butt, one inch range, one attack, four plus to hit, five plus to wound, no rend, one damage. And your Sky Spike, two inch range, three attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus one rend and two damage. Okay, cool. War scroll tutorials, toxic gases. So here you go, explanation how that toxic gases. And then they've, the Thundrix Profiteers have a stratagem called uh, Protect Boss or a thing. So as the Caradron code states, all salaries are subject to change based on the condition of the paymaster. While this unit is wholly within three inches of a friendly Bjorgen Thundrix, he has a ward of four plus. So there you go. Right, Loon Smasher Fanatics. High damage, sneaky, they're random. Okay, Loon Smasher Fanatics have variable damage, move and attack characteristics, so it's very hard to predict exactly how they will perform and to make plans based on their abilities. There you go. Boingrot Bounders. Maneuverability and Deadly Charge are their pluses, but they have weak defences. And then we're on to our battle plan, number six. Alliance of Order. The forces of order have been outmaneuvered by the forces of destruction and now are, they are surrounded, but they still hold the high ground. Uh, they should be able to count on reinforcements soon, but only if they can hold out long enough. If they win, they will be able to fortify and hold the high ground until a relief patrol arrives. If they fail, they will lose the high ground and the roadway that they have just cleared will be threatened by Destruction's new position. And you're going to have two hero options and four troops options. Alliance of Destruction. The forces of Destruction have a unique opportunity to take down an exhausted order force and gain some tactically useful ground for their own gittish purposes. The forces of order are surrounded and have barely begun to fortify the area, giving the forces of destruction a clear advantage. If they win, they will be able to take the high ground and mess up the recently cleared roadway. If they fail, the forces of order will hold a tactical strong point and be able to make use of the cleared road. And again, two hero options and four troops options. So we're going to be using all three of our battle mats that we currently have. The order forces are going to be set up in the centre and there's going to be three objective markers down the centre line and destruction are going to deploy on each of the short board edges. There you go. And in and Eve doing their playthrough. Right. Okay, come down. Let's have a look at Thundrix Profiteers, shall we? 
So these are a sculpt date of 2019. So two small sprues, molded bases, nice. Yeah, and they, they I mean they look good. They you've got your usual build up. They're obviously push fit minis. Uh, 25 mil bases for the standard infantry and there's a 32 mil bases for our sky warden and thundrick himself by the look of it look at this just like massive backpack <laughs> steampunk backpack i love them i think they're great that looks like some old bloody bicycle seat there whatever that's for um but yeah basically you've got the majority of the body and then you stick on the front and then we've got our little power packs which go on the backs of our peeps so we've got one power pack two three by the look of it and then there's our Sky Warden with his little dirigible balloon and his Sky Hook, Sky Claw, or whatever it is, his pokey thing. Has this guy got an anchor? Oh no, it's not. He's just he's just landing on. He's just sort of like standing on it as a pose. I don't think it's part of his kit to have an anchor. Yeah, cool. Like it. Very much like it. Um, I think this might be our Sky Warden because the anchor chain appears to be attached. That slots in there. So this base here with this little hole in the floor will be for Thundrick. Oh, maybe not. Actually, we've got three. We've got three large bases. Now, is that a... 28 or no, it's 32. Okay, three large bases. So interesting. Cool. Right, we'll get these built. Hey. Right, let's build a couple of Thundrix profiteers, shall we? Shall we start off with the guy that has the volley gun? Um, because I think that looks cool. So this chap literally only has less than six pieces um, but he looks brilliant so the first thing i'm actually going to do is pop the muzzle on this and i'm just gonna have a look at Oh, where did that go? I hate it when that happens. There it is. Um, so I think that that's probably going to go on like so. So just be aware that this piece does have a bit of a hinge attached to it. Um, which I'm going to place downwards so that it runs in line with this bar here because it's not perfectly clear in the instructions so that's the first bit um, then to be quite honest I might as well just glue him to the base and then build him up because otherwise there'll be I'd worry that placing him together so and then literally his head and arms holding the weapon are going to go in position Um, 
and that's just going to push in to all the holes once you've got it lined up. There you go. Jobs are good. And so there you go. He's got that broken open as if he's going to do a reload. And then this backpack piece. Um, the little, from the look of it, the little um, gauge that's on it appears to situate downwards, so underneath, and it appears that it goes on like so, so down underneath. So there's our volley gun guy. Here's Thundrick. So again, we've got a muzzle that needs to go onto the weapon. So I'm going to do that now. <gasps> so that's that bit. And I'm also just going to glue Thundrek to the base as well. then so we need to glue this back piece on and his arm into position which is gonna go in there I think yeah so that will locate and then there's a little hole for his power cable there so let's do that first, get that into position. Like thus. And then going to okay right so yep push in there so he's got a little pin here which is going to be for his head so just make sure that you leave that free it's a little bit confusing to begin with just push it on um, because this pin on the back of his backpack is going to go through I'm just going to shave off a little bit to help the air escape as you push it on so backpack is going to push on and you've got this power cable here which needs to be angled to the bottom Just make sure that you align your cable up squarely like that. Um, I'm going to pop the head on. So that goes into pedal position and then this tiny little canister here. So just make sure you orientate it up the right way because there are two cables which locate into different uh, tanks 
And there you go, that's Thundrick. And he looks pretty darn cool, personally, if I do say so myself. So, there's Thundrick. And we have our Sky Warden. We have this guy with his, uh, what is that? Ether shot rifle. And we have our guy with his privateer pistol and an Arcanaut cutter. Or a cutlass to you and I. And there you go. They are Thundrix profiteers, as it were. Right, hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video. Alright, take care. Bye bye.